Hello. Are we back on? Yep, maybe on. Cool. Hi. Hello. Sorry about that fuckery. I bet you we just lost like a hundred viewers. Cool. Based. Thank you, internet, for whatever that fucking was. Um, we can continue watching Sophie's speech now if you want. That was shit. It was fucking awful. Thank you. For sticking around whoever did. Um, anyway. Let's have a look. Let's change the title to BBC Trans Rights Coverage because we might as well. Um, that, that fucking sucked. So, who's here? Who's queer? Who's doing everything? Um, I don't know what happened. I, that's... I mean, technology is awful at the best of times, honestly. Moo, there you go. Enjoy that one. Um, welcome back, everybody. Can we, we can all move to AU so we can just broadcast locally to each other. Let's just start a commune and I'll just stream to everybody in the commune. It'll be like a massive lesbian polycule or something. I don't know. Back and ads too. Fuck yay. Shit. Anyway, my girlfriend's going to order me a McFlurry. Nah, no, I just like it is. Nah. Huh? Nah, I'm good. Just an Oreo. I, I know I shouldn't be ordering an Oreo product. Internet just dropped out for some reason. We reset the modem, and after a few minutes it came back, so... Did you forget a chicken and cheese burger? <laughs> yes, I did, actually. I would love one. <laughs> Four I actually would down one right now. <laughs> I mean, you can get something else if you want. You can't get a hot apple pie, though. They're out of stock. Uh, there were two... Oh really? There we go. Amazing. <laughs> um, internet. I don't know why the internet died. My internet bill's paid, so I don't know what the problem there was. It's it's very likely that it's just Australian internet is trash. So there you go. Honestly, that's about it. Um, let's come back to this, I suppose. Um, because we were we were doing this a moment ago, so we might as well continue doing this. Um. <clears throat> Where were we? All right. We'll come back about a minute or so, because I don't know how much you folks lost of that. So we'll we'll get back to this. Um, and we'll... Oh, and dangerous figure. Hang on. Pardon? Pardon? I want chippies. Yeah. And sauce. No, sure, large. Sure. Or get me a large. Okay, how much is it going to be? No, I mean like the whole thing. What's the delivery? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I've got like... Nice. We are organizing chippy. I want hot chippy. Sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> I don't want you to know how poor and destitute I am, so I muted my microphone so you couldn't find out exactly how much money's in my bank account right now. Anyway, let's continue watching this. Uh, it doesn't help that the internet is like 400 different barely cobbled together systems. Uh, like, the internet literally looks like this. Let me show you what the, the internet looks like. This is the whole internet, okay? Let me open this image in a new tab and bring that over here. Uh, this is the whole internet. This is the internet. This is how the internet... Um, so everyone is aware. What? The internet's a little black box. This is what's inside the little black box. It's just assorted randomly colored cables thrown fucking everywhere with no management whatsoever. Um, and this is why shit breaks down all the time. Melbourne streamer you were lurking lost their stream 10 minutes before me. Business as usual on the NBN. Yeah, I'm not shocked, honestly. I am not at all surprised that that's how that happened. So there we go. Speaking of which, would that Melbourne streamer happen to be Steftacular by any chance? Um, is that my PC? Listen, you shut your mouth about my cable management right now. <laughs> my cable management sucks. Anyway, I, I plan, once I move, I plan on cable managing a little bit. Use her to further their oh. reactionary goals. Last year, a Republican senator quoted her while voting down LGBT equality legislation in the Senate. But... I'm not here to talk about J.K. Rowling. I actually don't care very much about J.K. Rowling, uh, believe it or not. Even if I did, she is in the turf career death, uh, career death spiral now. With people Hello, Nath. How you doing? Honestly, like, I, I get, I feel like this is the way that a lot of trans people actually feel about J.K. Rowling. Is like, we don't care. Can she stop talking about us? That's it. 
Like that's it, any trans folks in chat. Is that the, is that? Um, yeah, hi. Uh, is that your viewpoint on jowling, cowling, rowling? I literally just I would be happy if I never had to hear her name ever again. But that's it. Like we don't. A lot of people seem to think uh, J.K. Rowling has got a lot of trans enemies specifically. It's like no, we're indifferent. Stop talking about her. She's insufferable. Because she doesn't stop talking about us. We're minding our own business being interested in trains and shit. Like, can can we, like... I, I just felt the need to condense this box. Um, the regrettable reality of the scenario. Lady Undra, your name color has changed. Everyone's name color in chat has changed now. Um, gotta go do some groceries. Hope you have a safe trip to the grocery store. Please don't catch COVID. Um... Yeah, I, I feel like the regrettable reality of the situation with Rowling and Chappelle and Gervais is supposed to have another Netflix special coming, so get ready for that one. Um, I, I wonder how much transphobia he can fit in it. The, the, the awful situation is like, we don't want to talk about these people. We don't want to hear from these people. We don't care about their opinions on us. But it gets shoved down our throats and we have no recourse but to rebut you know, it's, it's unfortunate and it's insufferable. Like, leave us alone. Jesus Christ. Public figures distancing themselves from her over her bigotry and her... The perils of ordering McDonald's. Uh, we have to do net codes for making online purchases and shit. Sorry. Continue campaigning against this is the good rights content. Me sitting here muted, just showing a code to my girlfriend on my phone, while you all just sit there awkwardly, like, "Is something gonna happen?" <laughs> half of turf complaints are about the blowback they get for being transphobic. The other half are about fictional rapists dressing like women. Legit though, they it, it's like a, a fan fiction forum. If you ever go to a turf website like uh, Over It or um, Mumsnet or whatever, they just make up these ridiculous stories about trans women that just never happened, so they can get mad at them. And then or like they they don't even make up stories. Sometimes they're just like, I'm really terribly worried about this, that, and the other happening. Um, if they open the floodgates and I'm like, like that, they'll say shit like they're worried that if they allow trans women in women's restrooms, it's going to see a huge uptick in sexual assaults in women's restrooms, for example, one of the major talking points. And it's like trans women have been using the women's toilets forever. And near as I can tell, uh, there's not really a statistical significance to sexual assaults in public bathrooms in the first place. Like, it's... Sexual assault is more likely to happen elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's stupid. Do they have one fucking example of a trans woman predating on someone... Praying, it would be praying. Have people been to anime cons? <laughs> oh, yeah, the, the James Acasta thing. I... Pfft. Compulsory Acasta. You folks can watch that. I'm not going to watch that. I've seen that enough times. I don't need to see it again. It's vulnerable and marginalized minorities in our society. One is almost tempted to imagine Joanne haunted by the spectre of Graham Linehan in her Scottish castle. The ghost of turf Christmas yet to come. <laughs> I'm not concerned by J.K. Rowling. I am concerned by institutions like the BBC, the Times, the Telegraph, the Guardian, other so-called journalistic institutions which use the cl It's rather odd, actually, that the, the Guardian, the very same Guardian that operates numerous different um, uh, publications across the world, right? is so specifically transphobic in the UK, and yet 
the Guardian AU, I've seen numerous pro-trans stories. And even in the US, um, there have been multiple pro-trans stories, but for some reason the Guardian UK is specifically transphobic. ...of journalism to draw everyone's attention to... And yeah, Midnight, it's a, it's a nonsense argument and it's entirely on purpose. Trans people are much more likely to get assaulted in public than cis, exactly. The bigotry of people like Rowling. A study by Paul Baker of Lancaster University found that between 2018 and 2019, the British press released in total 6,400 articles about trans people. We're flattered, really. <laughs> about half the articles refer to incidents of transphobia using oh, words shit. like alleged or What the supposed. fuck? How did I do that? 15% put transphobia in quotes. Cute. Uh, there were hundreds of articles describing trans people as a It's about money, and that's the wild concept to me. I mean, really, at the end of the day, especially with folks like Graham Linehan, is uh, the fact that there are definitely people right now who are using transphobia because it's a hot-button topic uh, to make money off of. And that's just so honestly depressing of a concept. Aggressive, offended, demanding, threatening, militant. Uh, I see you. Sassy oh, live. Thank you for the raid. Welcome, Welcome into the road. Friends. Room. How are you doing? What's happening in your corner of the world? Let me put some fancy lights on for you. Welcome in. How's it going, folks? Welcome <laughs> to the road room. I am your host, the indomitable Abigail Beck. Uh, and today we are covering some videos from the trans rights protest that happened outside the BBC Broadcasting House, because I'm just literally reading the title of this video. Um... As, at the moment, we're watching Sophie's speech at that protest. Uh, how you's going, folks? Welcome in, welcome in. What'd you get up to tonight? Can we get a shout-out by any chance? Is there a, Are there any mods left in chat, or did they all leave when the internet died? <laughs> oh, the bot's dead! No, shit! The bot died! <laughs> there we go, the bot's connected. Try again. Indomitable. Unassailable. I am the mighty Talos. From the Elder Scroll. <gasps> also, my cat's confused by all the color changing lights. He's looking around and he's like, he's got dinner plate eyes going on. How's it going? How's it going? We are back. We are back. We lost our connection before. We lost the internet before, but we are back in business. Um, but yeah, right now we are watching this. Feel free to join us. You're doing a stream, but had to call it early, feeling a little unwell. Oh no, I'm so sorry. I hope you feel better soon. We've been feeling a little bit unwell lately because of freaking COVID. We caught the COVIDs. And today is the last day of isolation. So tomorrow we're rapid testing to see if we're still positive. In which case, if we are, fuck. Shit. And 151 mentions of the transgender lobby? <laughs> uh, <laughs> What is the transgender lobby, by the way? We still don't have any definition of that. It goes on to say that the reporting closely resembles the reporting he studied that Muslims faced in the wake of the 9-11 terror attacks, that feminists faced in the 1990s. I would go on further to compare it to the coverage of gay people under Margaret Thatcher. God rest us all. And in my last speech, I examined the similarities to reporting around the Hillsborough disaster. In 2020, just the Sunday Times alone released nearly an article every single day about trans people. <laughs> Doesn't it feel like you're being blasted by a constant stream of gibberish and nonsense and thin grey gruel all the time? That's the point. It's a tactic called fire hosing in which the media overwhelm us with so much nonsense and misinformation and broadly dishonest reporting and we couldn't possibly have the time to sift through it all and, re and refute it. When J.K. Rowling said that a man who has no intention of getting hormones Gish or therapy yeah. can access women's spaces, the BBC reported it. Literally reminds me of that one video we watched of Ben Shabibo, where he was having a whinge about Elliot Page. And he just rushed, like, he went from Elliot Page transitioning to a man, and, or at least to trans mask, and by the end of the video, he was talking about trans women being predators in bathrooms. And it's like, in a, in a 10 minute video, he just, he, he rushed through so many stupid tangentially related little factoids, or not even factoids, fictionoids, you know, a whole bunch of bad faith bullshit, which is just literally a gish gallop going from point A to point B to point C to point D. 
you know, as rapidly as possible so that your opponent can't really um, rebut you in time. But, lol. Um, critically, Pink News called, out, called her out for misrepresenting the state of medical gatekeeping in the UK, and Channel 4 were quick to fact-check Pink News and tell them that J.K. Rowling hadn't technically said anything factually wrong. From there, we could get into a tedious discussion of how dangerous predators wouldn't really be deterred by laws around gender identity if they wanted to go into women's spaces, and how J.K. Rowling seems to think that trans women show their gender recognition certificates when they go to pee, and so on. I make sure to keep my gender recognition certificate with me at all times, whenever I need to piss in public. And so on. And you see how we'd be tricked into having a conversation <laughs> entirely pee. on their terms, tricked into wasting our time? I can see plenty of fact-checking, but nowhere I look can I see any critical analysis of what the media says, why it says what it says, and why it says what it says when it says it. So welcome to my speech, we're going to do some critical media analysis. Yay! Woo! Yay! <laughs> Last year in August, we protested outside Downing Street and explained in no uncertain terms that trans people face an exterminationist project from bigots in power and that there is a human rights crisis for trans people in our country right now. The mainstream media didn't even remotely touch it. We know they were aware of it. We know some journalists. We know they knew about it. They didn't report on it at all. The BBC are happy to report on J.K. Rowling's tweets. They're happy to regurgitate the vile lies of hate groups, but their commitment to impartiality doesn't extend as Trans far flag as cape. showing the speeches that we gave last year. Trans flag cape. Trans flag cape. Yeah, talking about the people that we've lost to suicide. The years and years of struggling against the system that wants us dead. And the true human reality of trans lives. What the media chooses to cover and what it chooses to ignore is incredibly telling. After I gave my speech, it transpired there had been a little fascist creep in the audience who, who was taking videos and pictures upskirting me on stage to send to fascist collaborator Andy Ngo, who shared it with his audience of nearly a million people. Andy Ngo is a far-right journ <laughs> <Andino. laughs> journalist who sends the names of anti-fascist activists to known neo-Nazi terrorist groups such as Attenborough. Yeah, fuck Andy no. These upskirt photos were more Andy coverage nope. than our protest got from the Andy nope don't engage with him. Entire British media. My speech for those unaware was about the way that the media lie and manipulate the public into Yeah, I'm in I'm in restrooms all the time because I have to constantly fucking piss. I've got such a small bladder. Jesus Christ. Fighting against our own best interests. I got sympathy from many for the harassment I faced, but still, people weren't engaging with what the speech had been about. Eventually, I was interviewed by Vice, an American publication, about the harassment, and my one request was that they include a link to the speech, because no one was talking about it. They were only talking about the harassment. I had to ask Vice to include it because I made a whole speech about the corruption of the British media and how they manipulate us, and all anyone was talking about was my underwear. Anyone aware of the basic facts here can see this as what it is, bog-standard, bigoted harassment and misogyny. But institutions like this one have somewhat of a vested interest in keeping people as far away from the facts as possible. Gender Intelligence and the Good Law Project are now organizing to sue the government to end the NHS medical discrimination that trans people face, which is fantastic. But mark my words, they are going to ramp up their attacks on trans people to distract from it as much as possible. The nonsense, the gibberish, the thin grey gruel is going to- Pardon? Oh, okay. ...get worse before it gets better. I am sure that at this protest today we will hear the details of Caroline Lowbridge's article We're being pressured into sex by some trans women many times. That's literally the title of the article, by the way. Just so we're clear, Carolyn Lowbridge published an article called We're Being Pressured Into Sex By Some Trans Women. And the evidence presented in the article itself, I just want to bring this up, is so shaky at best. It's like a few cis lesbians had an uncomfortable, like, flirtation with a trans woman, maybe. Like, no, like, I don't think anyone in that article mentioned actually being pressured into sex. It's just like, oh, I didn't want to date a trans woman and she got a bit angry or something like that. It's like, they, they literally had no reason to publish that incredibly lengthy article. It was bullshit. It was just complete and utter bullshit. 
And likewise, the story of how Lily Cade, a cis lesbian interviewed for the article, was a known serial rapist. <laughs> Cotton ceiling bad, don't like being called out on my bigotry. And here we go about Lily Cade again. Lowbridge chose to interview despite another interviewee who was cut from the piece. Some of them aren't even that. One was just an anecdote about how her ex-girlfriend called her a transphobe for saying she wouldn't have sex with a transphobe. Yeah, a trans, trans woman, sorry, not a transphobe. If you have sex with a transphobe, I don't like you. Um, pardon? Yeah, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, ha I would hate fuck a transphobe one time <laughs> if they were hot enough. No, um, it, it's, it was literally that, like, there was nothing in there. We could go back through the article again if you want to self-flagellate, but the reality of the situation is they had such a flaky basis for this argument, and they still managed to publish this article, which was rooted in completely fabricated, yeah, hypotheticals. It create hypotheticals, get mad about them, and it's just, honestly, if it weren't such a horrible thing for us, it would be hilarious, honestly. Reading through it, it would be like reading a, a piece from The Onion. If it, weren't, if it weren't actively harming the trans community, it would be fucking funny how bad that journalism is. Anyway. Telling her that Lily Cade was such or how Cade used the platform she was given to publish a document calling for the genocide of trans women only two days later. I won't hash out all the details again here. <laughs> yeah, she published a lengthy, like, we talked about this before, but, like, I looked at the blog post and I had to, um, it, it was like that J.K. Rowling essay that was, like, 4,000 words. Lily Cade's manifesto was even longer than that. It just kept going. Genocide of trans people. Let's come back. Trans women only or how Cade used the platform she was given to publish a document calling for the genocide of trans women yes, only two literally. days later. I won't hash out all the details again. And li yet Lily Cade isn't in jail. Uh, I don't like the term cancelled. I don't like to engage with that rhetoric. Here. The biggest journalistic institution in the country I have lived in almost my entire life published an article calling people like me rapists associating our basic inherent characteristics with rape. The article's only named source was herself a serial rapist. And on the subject, this is, um, this is not really related to anything going on with the video, but I noticed ContraPoints tweeting a bunch of things seemingly related to a potential cancelling number two, and I'm like, can she not with that? I generally like ContraPoints, but are we really going to get another video about cancelling? Can we please stop? Rapist. The author deemed this attack on trans women more important than the trivial, unimportant, you know, uh, tiny information that her only named source was herself a rapist. The surreality of this experience tests my descriptive power, and I write for a living. Seeing this article, I broke down in tears. This is the culmination of daily, constant attacks that people like me face. Interrogation of our lives, speculation about our genitals, Guessing over whether we are a threat to others. It never stops. It is constant. The BBC published an article platforming a serial rapist who used that platform to give that they gave her to write a genocidal manifesto calling for the execution of trans women, the lynching of trans women in the public eye, and the gang oh, yeah, rape of the back. mother of a trans child. The BBC published that article calling trans women rapists when the BBC, it is a known fact, spent decades covering for the vile actions of men like Jimmy Savile. Doesn't it feel like you're being blasted with their thin grey gruel all the time? It's a distraction! While our government slips in terrifying authoritarian policies. Our government right now is organizing to strip us of our right to protest. They're, publish they're pushing through bills that would take away people's passports for drug offenses and strip people of their citizenship without warning or notice. This country is rapidly sliding into becoming a police state. And institutions like this one are publishing articles framing trans women as a threat to the safety of cis women. I know who is a threat to the safety of women because I know who killed Sarah Everard. Oh, fuck. What a... That's a fucking smackdown. Holy shit. The BBC... The Beeb gave J.K. Rowling an award for her willingness to stand up to us scary transgenders. They said it was for the defense of freeze. I've, I'm trying to remember correctly here. Hang on, hang on. I know what she's getting at. Um, I can't recall. 
A cop. Yeah, I thought it was a cop. I wasn't a hundred percent certain, but I knew it was someone in, in a position of power. Free speech. I say it was an award for producing their thin grey gruel for them. They would love if I spent this whole speech talking about J.K. Rowling. They would love for us Challenge to spin our wheels, Rowling. focusing on individual bigots. They might even give me an award if I could give an impassioned enough defense of trans humanity and trans rights and freedom and against the same people they already gave awards to. So, at the risk of repeating myself, if there are any journalists around here who are interested in the truth, I have some news you might want to report. We're bringing the fight to you now. We see you. You don't get to be invisible anymore. We see you, we see your nonsense for the distraction that it is, and you aren't going to waste our time anymore. If the BBC, or Channel 4, or anyone working there, or any other major journalistic institution wants to break this cycle of pathetic cra craven pandering to the ruling class, I ask of you what I asked of Vice, share this speech in full. Share our speeches in full. If you don't, you're cowards. But that's okay, I already knew you were cowards. But if you do... Well, we'll see. To be clear, I have nothing but respect for journalists who speak truth to power, and I have nothing but contempt for institutions like this one that seek to divide and pacify people and distract from the inhuman cruelty of our government. So, I'll speak now to the people the BBC will not show my speech to. If you would, please share this to them yourselves. If you'd like, tell them what I have to say in your own words. Get yourself a friend who will hold your umbrella. I like I like how it's like I assumed you were trans. I like how you can assume just about anyone in my chat is trans. <laughs> Actually love that. Ahem. They want you to see the people all around you as dangerous criminals so they can do anything they want to all of us together. They work hard at telling you that trans people aren't ordinary working class people. We're all pink haired, Did someone say trans educated people? communists, am I right? Hello, trans people in my phone. Well, you're in my computer at the moment. You you can be in my phone later if you follow me on the Twitters. There's my girlfriend, by the way. She's cute. Uh, the Sarah Everard case is actually really fucking frust infuriating. Honestly, I saw a few tweets about it, and that was it. I said to myself, you know what? I am not going to invest myself in another story of a woman being killed by abuse of power. I just, I did not have the mental energy to go through reading the details of that case. And maybe I should now, but back when it happened, I was like, I just can't. It's, you know, you know, it, it's one of those kind of things. You keep hearing this grim reality all the time, and sometimes you just got to check out. Because they want you to see us as not having any interests in common. But the truth is, we have more in common with one another than we could possibly ever have with the ruling class or their media stooges. I know that you I mean, yeah, Natalie Bad, actually. She's not as based as I thought she was when I originally came out. Um, I mean, I, I have liked some of her videos in particular. I really did like Envy, and I think I have an appreciation for her aesthetic choices. But I can understand where you're coming from. You're tired of their gibberish, of their nonsense, of their thin grey gruel. I know you don't feel seen or heard or represented by the media. I know you don't feel like they speak for you. We don't feel like they speak for us either. But this isn't a tug of war between us over whose side gets represented. Everyone feels like the media aren't representing them because their job, their real job, the one they really do for the people they really work for, the ruling class of this country, is to make you feel like they're siding with me and make me feel like they're siding with you. When in reality, they're on the side of the politicians, the big businesses, the side of power, against the side of the people, against the truth and against reality. They don't serve you, they don't serve me, they serve power. I don't want you to learn complicated gender theories or finicky rules to interact with me. I just want you to treat me with basic human decency and respect. And you know what? When I meet people in real life, that's exactly what they do, and it's always fine. Somehow, nonetheless, people come away with the impression Sophie that trans fire. people are God easily damn. offended. Socially this is like, what, the second or third speech I've seen of Sophie's? Um, and yeah, just a phenomenal speaker, honestly enviable. And uh, good videos, too, worth watching. Video. Quick to judge people for getting unspoken rules wrong. That is a picture of me the media wants you to have. 
All I want you to know about trans people is how wondrous the experience is of finding the person that you were always supposed to be and becoming them. I want you to know about trans joy. I want you to know about trans happiness. I want you to know how much better it gets for trans people when all of the barriers are down and we can just be ourselves. I want you to be happy for us so that when someone- I mean, I want to say this just from my own personal perspective. I'm going to be completely and totally blunt and open. And yeah, the yellow converse is a fucking based. Uh, the shit she files through every day, like just looking at that kind of grim shit on a routine basis, and there is so much, honestly, that it never ends. And being a trans content creator also draws a ton of ire to you. I will say that. Um, and <clears throat> like having to sift through that kind of stuff all the time, having to look at the most depressing things being written about you, being said about you, um, broadly, and just knowing that those kinds of opinions are not uncommon, right? Um, it's honestly really mentally exhausting and debilitating to the point where you just sometimes need to detach from all of it. Um, they do a thing with DJ Mule on Bad Bunny's channel called Red Planet that focuses on what can be done to make things better. Well, that's good at least. Yeah. When in your life comes out as trans, and believe me, they will, you can say what we always say. Good for them. I'm so happy for you. Don't they look happier every single day? I'm so glad that you're you, and I wouldn't want you to be anybody else, or have to pretend to be anybody else anymore. Share this speech in full. Share our speeches in full. Join me in no longer accepting their nonsense, their gibberish, their thin grey gruel. Join me in understanding exactly what its purpose is and saying to these institutions who want to remain Lord invisible, we see you! And once we can reject their nonsense and see what really matters here, they can't distract us anymore, they can't make us fight each other anymore. Once we can see what they're doing and who they're doing it for and what it really is, we can finally work together to make a society that works for the many and not just for the few. Thank you. My partner Natalie would like to make a short remark. Hi, I'm Natalie. I'm Sophie's partner. I had said something about the Caroline Lowbridge article in particular. I'm sorry to interrupt. I was there crying with Sophie when we read the Caroline Lowbridge article. Any woman who loves women, anyone who calls himself a feminist, should be horrified and disgusted at that article. Middle class transphobic bigots like Caroline see women who love women as pure vestiges of virginity to be protected from spoilage by male, male influence. They frame us as brainwashed and in need of their protection for loving trans women. They are paternalistic, they are misogynistic and possessive of our lives and our bodies, our choices over who we love. This is hideously familiar. Women and children are always weaponized to fearmonger and drive violence against minorities. Ten out of ten. They don't get to do it in my name. We are not your- Thank you, by the way, Neon Theory, for the 10 bits. Dropping in to say you're absolutely slaying today and to spread good vibes. Thank you so much. The fucking virgins. It's my body and it's my fucking choice. Fuck you, Caroline Lowbridge. I can't do a chant for this because it's got the sweary words in it, but can we get some fuck you, Caroline Lowbridge in chat? Uh, that'd be based. Can we get some fuck you, Caroline Lowbridge in chat? There we go. That was that. Cool. That's that whole thing. <laughs> Fuck you, Carolyn Lowbridge. They were both fantastic. All three of them were fantastic. Uh, heck off, Caroline Lowbridge. <laughs> we could do that one. There you go. Heck off, Caroline Lowbridge. Heck you. You bitch. Honestly, though, you know, it, I think it's justifiable when you are a targeted, disenfranchised minority who is, you know, drawn to the social gallows like that to be a mite pissed at a particular individual who is at the forefront of that. What's up? Ah, shit. Okay. Alright, that's all good. No BTTV, sadly not. I haven't bothered with any of those kind of extensions. 
I'm sure they would be useful, but I'm just lazy. I'm honest. I was supposed to design a very simple t-shirt today. I might do it after stream. Really dumb, basic t-shirt, right? That I could sell to you simps, right? But I didn't end up doing it. I didn't, I was so lazy, I didn't even open GIMP and put together a really honestly dog shit shirt design. It would be the worst thing in the world, but it'd be funny, right? Do it on stream, I could. <laughs> I could. I honestly don't know how to make a shirt. Um, I'd have to look into what Teespring's recommended dimensions are and stuff. It's what? Yeah, it'd be a lot of setting up. I'll do it after stream when I can focus more. I wouldn't be able to do that while interacting with you a lot and it would make for boring content. Fuck Teespring. What's wrong with Teespring now? What fucking shirt site can I use? Jesus. I've heard Redbubble's bad, now Teespring is bad, which one do I fucking use? I don't know where these, these print to order t-shirt sites... I don't know which one of them is good. Um, hello Zeta, welcome back. You love my septum piercing? Yeah, I got my septum done. I'm gonna get my bridge done eventually. I'm gonna take these out. Oh, excuse me. Pardon? Yeah, I wanna get my bridge done and I wanna get my labrette done. I, I thought about getting... 69 viewers by the way nice um i thought about getting uh snake bites but or are they called there's there's a specific one i like but pardon i don't know but i'd be ripping off nine and i don't want to do that they're cute but i don't want to rip them off um which is stupid because like everyone's got all sorts of different piercings yeah it's dumb um no, not dolphin bites, snake bites. Although dolphin bites with two little spiked piercings would be pretty sick. Anyway, yeah, snake bites. My friend's got snake bites. And kissing them is super weird, by the way. I don't know why I said that. Why did I say that? <laughs> it's not super weird. They're a good kisser. But I'm, I'm just thinking about the fact that the piercings kind of get in the way. Here's me just casually admitting to just kissing my friends because my friends are hot and I like to kiss them. Pardon? It's <laughs> such a big thing. Oh my god. I have a girlfriend and I kissed a friend of mine. <gasps> this is that's so wild. I'm gonna upset the cishets with their monogamous relationships. Hot people kiss their friends. <laughs> True though. Right? I actually DM'd a cis friend of mine recently. Can you believe it? I DM'd a cis friend. I'm like, hey, next time we meet and I'm not totally infected with COVID, want to kiss? And she's just like, Haha, sure. <laughs> <laughs> she might think I'm joking. Whatevs. Kiss to go with a vertical labrette ones. Vertical labrette. I mean, is that, that's what I want to get. Or do you mean like a bar? What, what do you mean? I just want to get a piercing there and get a little spike. I want to get a little spike. Which would look like a soul patch, which would probably be dysphoric as all fuck, honestly, if I think about it. I shouldn't think about it too much. You have the right not to be seen as a perv because you're on a self-discovery journey. Absolutely right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you could. You'd be left with a scar, but I mean, scars are cool. Well... Yeah, that'd be pretty gnarly. Uh, through your lower lip from underneath. Oh, I see. I wanted, like, the one that's, uh, like, through the lip and comes out down here. Uh, gonna pluck your beard hair. Sounds not good, actually. Shrug, kiss whoever you want. I'm a full believer in sharing affection with your friends. Hold hands, cuddle, kiss, whatever. Exactly, yeah. If people have an issue with me, like, sharing affection with my friends, they can fuck themselves. I don't care. D you know, just... <laughs> fuck themselves because no one else will. There you go. That was, that was interesting. Um, cuddle puddle with friends while you stream dumb shit. I mean, yeah, as long as... I mean, I would do a Twitch stream of just, like, hanging out on... Uh, a bunch of friends hanging out on a bed just being cozy as long as no one goes like super sexual with it which is the worry of course <laughs> not the she just said we practically did that when we were in melbourne not the sex thing we just hung out on a bed and just chatted um but anyway 
Uh, let's let's continue down this road of covering this. Um, the what's he? Just do not like using labels. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit in the same boat. Like there are a few labels that apply to me, but once we start going super in depth with all these different labels, I sort of mentally check out. You know, consensual platonic affection is something I crave more than sex. I get it. Super QPR with your friends. If you're a cool person and we mesh, I'm good with most things. I mean, yeah, all right. And I get that, like, this is probably why I feel so particularly uncomfortable around certain groups of friends that are, like, friends of friends or friends of family or whatever, you know? Because I know that those particular people, right? Let's just say, let's just use my sister as an example. <laughs> My sister is very much like a monogamous heterosexual, right? To put it simply, you know, she has a boyfriend. So she and her boyfriend will go and play like board games with other similar couples sort of thing. So it's very, very vanilla in that sphere of things, you know, and I just feel weird being the person in that social group who is obviously none of those things. <laughs> Exactly. Why would you go play board games with friends if you can't fuck them afterwards? What? This is just such... Anyway. No, but really, like, I think this is the thing with transness in general as well. Like, a ton of my friends are trans now. And the reason for that is because we have that shared lived experience of being transgender and we know what it is to deal with the kinds of things we deal with. It's, you know, people f gravitate towards their tribe and... You can try to find yourself in a um, in a social circle that involves people from all different walks of life, but broadly speaking, I think people are going to sort of, you know, lean towards those that are most similar to themselves because it's a comfortable circumstance. Um, I feel like monoculture has gate kept a lot of people from affection, leading to touch-starved humans. Yeah, which is awkward in a society where we have to social distance. Um, you mostly hang with other trans folks. As it's like cishet folks are uptight. Yeah, like, I mean, how many... And, and I'm getting... I'm, I'm honestly generalizing a bit. But it has been a consistent thing with me. Where, for example, I'm way more comfortable discussing, for example, sex. With certain trans and non-monogamous friends of mine. Right? I could not do that with, like, those cishet monogamous types. Um, because there's just a weird barrier to entry of that discussion, you know? What do they talk about? They don't talk about the fact that they did anal with five other trans girls the other night. <laughs> that didn't happen. For the record, that didn't happen. <laughs> what does cishet people even talk about? Um, sitcoms. They'll, they'll literally watch shows and have discussions around the show. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that cishets are inherently boring, you know? <laughs> Fucking TV shows, bro. Legit, though. Uh, we're going to hang out with people we relate to. Yeah, it's it's human. Generally feel uncomfortable around cis people. Um, there's rarely any common ground, and we often think my normal is intensely fucking weird. Yeah, that's another thing. Is like, if you're in my particular situation, Looper, okay, go get your go bag. Please take care of yourself. I hope you have a safe and pleasant night. Fingers crossed for you. Can we get some, can we get some love in chat for Looper? Um... Your friend group was a friend group before we realized we were all gay. We just slowly yassified over the years. But yeah, like, it's, it's one of those things where having the same shared experience of being a queer person makes a huge difference in how you relate to other people. Like, I still, like, find it strange sometimes to try and relate to my, uh, my cis friends that I do have. I do have cishet friends. There's still this invisible barrier of detachment from them where it's like yeah i'm your friend yeah i'm talking to you we're having fun it's cordial it's nice but there's just certain topics and certain methods of conversation i won't engage in with you and it's weird i don't feel like i can be completely open with them you know Read somewhere about how trans girls miss out on affection from other girls in their youth, like holding hands and arm locking, hugging. Simple stuff, but it makes trans girls overly awkward. I mean, yeah, that too. And as a result, um, you can't talk about spaghetti westerns with most people anyway. Trans trait. But yeah, like, that's the thing too, is, you know, I am 
still dealing with the whole showing affection to other people thing in general. Partially because of that, I think. Uh, one of your matters is a sex therapist, so we get into all sorts of interesting discussions that make cishet folks uncomfortable. Funny thing is, she is cishet, so she's like the best ally ever. Nice. Excuse me. Um, don't get me wrong, there will sometimes be that rare occasion that a cishet person will be genuinely understanding and fun to be around. You know a few people like that, but honestly, it's not very common. I mean, yeah, that's that's it, right? Even among the friends that I know are more understanding um, that are cishet, or at least cis, you know. I don't know many cis gays, I'll say that much. Um, but at least one of my friends is bisexual, which might, you know, sort of lean in the direction of, okay, you're a little bit weird like I am. So, but not completely. My sis had friends. I watched TV yesterday. Meanwhile, my queer friend. So how do you avoid people bumping your cervix too hard? <laughs> people are kind of exhausting. Yeah, exactly. Internet culture is separated into so many small communities that people's vocabularies are completely different, even if they belong to the same larger community. That's true, too. Um, learning to read people, the way they speak and the mannerisms that they exude, is a whole skill in itself. Uh, legit have no idea or patience to do small talk. Yeah, I can't do small talk. When people say, how are you? I'm like, what, the, what answer do you want from me? How am I? I'm existing. Nihilistic? What? I don't know. I took a shit today. <laughs> uh, I'm alive still, somehow. How's the weather? Yeah, garbage. It's hot. Don't like it. What do you talk with? What do you talk about? I'd like to say to my gay friends, I love you. They'd think it was sweet and all. But if I said that to one of my straight friends, most of them would be weirded out by it. Or just don't react the same. Yeah, exactly. Um, excuse me. I have a friend who's cis and bi. My bestie's cis. I have another friend who's cis. All three are white guys and they're all quite based. Though one is working towards being more based. Oh, yes. Uh, when I went to see the new Spider-Man, I had to drive with one cishet friend to get pizzas, and it was the most awkward car ride I've ever been on. <laughs> Fuck. I always answer honestly when people give idle, when they, people ask idle questions. Don't care if they have a negative reaction, you ask me a question and I answer it. I mean, I try to be as blunt as humanly possible most of the time. If somebody has uh, something, you know, rudimentary to ask me, I'll give you a blunt answer. I'm not going to beat around the bush here, because that's just a waste of time. But then, like, I don't, human socialization is weird, and, like, maybe maybe we're not even necessarily having a trans or queer discussion right now. Maybe we're having an autism discussion. Because it sounds like the lot of you were fucking autistic as shit. I'm, I'm diagnosing. Hi, what? Hi, she's autistic, apparently. Not diagnosed. This is autism discussion. <laughs> uh... ASD here. How do we feel about the term autism spectrum disorder? Somebody brought the point up the other day that they didn't like the phrase autism spectrum because it's dehumanizing and partly eugenicist, and I'm not sure how that... I don't know. Don't think it's a disorder. Yeah, it's autism spectrum... not disorders. What was... conditions. Autism spectrum conditions. Yeah, disorder's a bad term for it, which, you know, because disorder inherently implies otherness and inferiority. So that's um it's a way I experience the world I is different to you. Yeah. Autistics gravitate to author autistics for content. Author or other? The law of autistic attraction. I'll talk at length about media I love, but on the other hand, yes please tell me how your partner hit that spot and made you make in human sounds. Let's celebrate both. They're all based. <laughs> I mean we can't have those discussions on Twitch because TOS. But we can talk about the fact that we like sex. Um, when I was less open about being trans, being in stealth, I don't know if it's still called that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I've seen the term stealth thrown around here, generally speaking. But it can be isolating because you're always hanging around cis people and have to reject your inherent transness. It's even difficult to express your sexuality without feeling awkward. Which is a, um, a result of social expectations, not just around gender, but around sexuality as well. You know, you're not... You're not this is the thing, right? It's like the reason I feel more in tune with talking with my um, my trans and queer friends, queer in general, queer in general, about those kind of topics openly is because 
we all fall outside what is commonly considered to be socially acceptable, right? So when when you're talking with cishet folks, there is a general understanding that they fit a social norm already, right? And as a result, one of the social norms is don't talk about sex. It's a taboo, which is wild given we tend to live in a pretty sexually liberated society now. And yet that attitude pervades for reasons that escape me. Um, weird. Suggested that I have autism or a spectrum of it rather and the psychologist was like, don't even go there. Ooh, Chippy? I want Chippy first. Can you put the McFlurry in the fridge? In the freezer? No. I have Chippy. I'm allowed to have Chippy. Abigail can have little Chippy as a treat. You can't. Don't even think about it. Cats cannot have little a chippy as a treat. I can't get the fucking sauce lid off. No! It's stuck. I can't get the sauce lid off. <laughs> it's, this is supposed to be the base lid that comes off really easily and it's not. It's sweet and sour sauce. Hang on. I'm trying to wipe all the moisture off so I can get a good grip on it. Oh, wow. Try to wipe all the moisture off so you can get a good grip on it. Uh, phrasing, phrasing, phrasing. Also, somebody, those lids are hard. These ones are good. They've got a little lip, but it's not opening. Moist grip. I can't open it. My nails are too long. Look, look at these fucking talons. I haven't cut my nails in ages. Please do it. I want to eat my chippy with sauce. Abigail can have little hot chippy. I know what you did. I didn't do nothing. I blame the system. Sweet and sour is You're definitely... Pull oil? Hmm? Yeah, pull it all the way off. Sweet and sour is definitely what? The best. Chicken sauce. Chicken sauce? Well, sauce. you have nuggets with sweet and sour sauce. You're having chips though. Yeah. Bin. Mm-hmm. Bin. I need to do the thing. Oh. Yeah, Macca's chips go hard. Never yeah, mind, too. Okay, I get to eat multiple lids. Yay! Autism! <laughs> oh yeah, it's Madeline. Hey look, she's wearing shorts! And you're, you're not TOS. Under this, under this, Pardon? Under this, <laughs> I mean, that's still a top, you know. Anyway, Madeline and I are gonna eat Chippy and we're gonna talk about... Oh, hugs! Okay. okay. I'll just do a little hug because we got chips. Mm, Mm. She my person. I like her a lot. I think I'll keep her in my basement. We don't have basements. Yeah, no, we live in Australia. We don't have basements. Lol. I've literally never been to a house that has a basement. Oh, here we go. Life imitates art. The bong wall. The, the wall of bong resin in my lungs. Coronavirus. Okay. Uh, cannabinoids block cellular entry of SARS-CoV-2 and the emerging variants. Raise your hand if you had weed to the rescue on your 2022 pandemic bingo card. Abstract. As a complement to vaccines, small molecule therapeutic agents are needed to treat or prevent infections by severe acute respiratory symptom co coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, <coughs> and its variants which cause COVID-19. By the way, she's still coughing. Um, this is what <laughs> I love you, by the way. Um, yeah, this is the thing. Hang on. Grab those. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Honestly, I have just come to terms with the fact that Vorsch is permanently trending on Twitter. Go get a chair. Go get your chair. Bring it in. Uh, Vorsch is just always trending on my TL. I don't know why. Um, he is. But anyway... It's just all the time. It's not even like he's not even really trending. He's got like a thousand something tweets regarding him that day, and it's like that's not trending. What? The... Anyway, um, I, I suppose because I'm a streamer, I'm a content creator, so I follow other content creators. Anyway, should end all your tweets with Vorsch. Now I have a friend who would unfollow me if I if I um did that. Anyway. Yeah, fucking cat stolen my girlfriend's chair. Um, okay, so affinity selection mass spectrometry was used. Mass spectrometry 
was used for the discovery of botanical ligands to the SARS-CoV-2 sp spike protein. Cannabinoid acids from hemp, cannabis sativa, were found to be allosteric as well as orthosteric ligands with micromolar affinity for the spike protein. In a follow-up virus neutralization essays, uh, cannabigeloric acid and cannabidol cannabidolic acid prevented infection of human epithelial cells by a pseudovirus expressing the SARS-CoV-2 spike protein and prevented entry of live SARS-CoV-2 into cells. Uh, importantly, cannabigeroleic cannabigerolic acid and cannabidolic acid were equally effective against the SARS-CoV-2 alpha variant B117 and the beta variant B1351. Orally bioavailable and with a long history of safe human use, these cannabinoids isolated or in hemp extracts have the potential to prevent as well as treat infection by SARS-CoV-2. So, pardon? I'm orally bio. <laughs> Did you just hear what she said? Yeah. She's orally bioavailable. Hot. Uh, let's not drama. Especially given Vosh has been in my chat before and I don't hold any specific ill will toward him. Yeah, I'm not the kind of, like, I don't want to be that person, right? Who has people in my chat routinely just trashing another content creator. I hate that shit so fucking much. I will start drama with you cunts if you do that in my chat. I will start cancelling you on Twitter if you start bringing personal drama with streamers into my chat. Anyway. Still. Maddie mad cute. Yeah, you're cute. Everyone likes you. Raise your hand in chat if you want to bang my girlfriend. <laughs> you're not on Twitter, thankfully. Mm -hmm. You're allowed to raise your hand, by the way. I'm hot. You can do like a the hand raised emoji. Just o slash. O slash. Yeah, you can do this. You can just do this we'll one. Do slash. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if by bang you mean watch cartoons and eat ice cream. Speaking of, we also got ice cream. We got ourselves chippies and we got ice cream. Respectfully. You don't, unfortunately, you're demisexual. Understandable. It's understandable. As a fuck, so mind it. She's pretty though, so hi. Mm -hmm. Can I can I confess something that is not designed to hurt you? Okay. By the way, yeah. but I do love you, and I do love banging you, of course. Okay. Um, let's just clarify that we fuck. Um, but I think there's a weird thing, right? Cool. That I think I have sexually. I don't know if there's a word for it. That's effectively the opposite of demisexual. Like I find it way harder to bang strangers. Okay. Not not all the time, obviously. But the concept is very appealing. Anyway. Cool. I don't know if there's a word for that. Is there a word for that? Because I know demisexual is when you don't come across sexual attraction until you have an, a personal intimacy with that person. See, I, 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 I have... I can have sexual attraction if I don't have, like, intimacy or... There is a word for that. One second. But, Bring it to um, me. But, um... Lithsexual. Yeah, like, I... I love the idea of, like, meeting someone new and then fucking them later that night. I am so... I'm such a whore. Jesus. Yeah. I'm just saying this on Twitch chat. I should stop. Hmm. By the way, these chips aren't as good as I thought. They get... We're getting to the soggy chips. They're okay. They're okay, they're passable. Or we fray sexual. Like, um, <coughs> I only have sex in the lift tech engine. This is asexuality. Um, fray sexual, sexual attraction fades after initially meeting someone. That's not it, no. Um, lift sexual. A sexual orientation in which an individual feels romantic attraction to others. Wait, what? No. Oh, yeah. Soggy chips are best chips. Uh, it depends. You know what's good is like local takeaway chips that are nice and crispy and coated in chicken salt. Those are the best chips. Hard to find. Pardon? Yeah, they are hard to find. And usually they're fucked when you get them delivered or something. Yeah, they get ruined if you get them delivered. Okay, fray sexual. Sexual attraction fades after initially meeting someone opposite of demisexual. Cupiosexual wanting a sexual relationship but does not experience sexual attraction. Lithosexual, experience sex experiencing sexual attraction but not wanting it reciprocated. None of those are right. 
here's the thing: is like my sexual attraction to someone doesn't go away if I uh, fuck them. I see you. Extremely online guests. left. We're talking about well, sex. Friends. <laughs> Welcome in, folks. Welcome to the rogue room. We're talking sex. We are literally just talking sex. Um, enjoy. We're talking different sexuality. I was, I was definitions, words. I was about to say disorders, and I'm like. It's not really the phrase for it. How's it going? What were you getting up to? Talk shows and podcasts. What were you talking about tonight? Tell us all about it. Talking about cum and Pepsi. We're talking about sex. We're talking about, and people still haven't given me an actual label for it. I mean, it does it does fade a little bit. I suppose it does, like... I get attracted to someone, and if I continue to interact with them and we maintain a relationship, I don't get less attracted to them. It's just the the idea in particular of yeah, wanting to bang someone new is incredibly enticing sexually yeah. you know <laughs> big horn is sexual so it's not it's not a crush what the f anyway <laughs> i support trans people but i don't buy their only fans cuz i'm poor <laughs> It's this not a crush. Mm. It's about the anyway, we're, we're all over the place right now. We're eating chips. Welcome in, Raiders. I hope you're having a lovely night. Um, I hope you've been doing whatever. I support trans people, but... Yes. <laughs> we just got chips and we got... Um, <laughs> AGP grind set. That's a vibe, though. <laughs> um, I'm so AGP. I was watching myself so in America. So AGP. You're not allowed to say that. I just said I was watching myself in the mirror. Just watching yourself in the mirror. Yes, just looking at yourself in the mirror. It's an AGP moment. <laughs> Liking yourself? Wow. AGP. I have this weird thing where I get crushed is super easy, but then it kind of disappears. I've heard of that kind of thing, too. Um, I've heard of people who get... Um, I, I've heard some people... Who have BPD, yeah. borderline personality disorder, who have a strong attachment situation going on, where like they really get super attached to one person for a bit, and then that fades pretty rapidly after a while, mm. um, to the point where it can become resentment, which is not really great. Not ideal. Not ideal. Not, ideal. not everyone experiences that, of course. What's AGP other than a defunct graphics card standard? Lol. <laughs> <laughs> that's all it is. That's all it needs to be. Basically, instant infatuation. That's a that's a road to disaster. Oof. Oof. Have like eight hundred crushes. I mean, this, this mm. was instant infatuation. Hmm. This was instant infatuation for me. True. Same though. Um. Oops. You only have gender envy. I mean, yeah, our, our, this is not a, the greatest thing to admit to, but our relationship basically started on a crush. I think that's okay. Like an actual infatuation. Mm, yeah. Both of us. <laughs> you know that feeling where you crush so hard you get stomach cramps? That's just app day for me. I'm crush sexual. I love it when Bayonetta crushes me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I think I've seen your picture somewhere before. Oh yeah, that's right. It was in the, in the dictionary next to damn. <laughs> that's fucking based. Hell yeah. <laughs> I've got to play Bayonetta 2. And I remember being pissed off when they announced Bayonetta was going Switch exclusive, right? Mm. But now I have a Switch, so there's literally no reason for me to not get Bayonetta 2. Other than the fact that it's been out for years and it's still full price. Oh, it's still expensive now. Somebody buy me Bayonetta 2. How's that working for it? Mm -mm. Somebody give me enough money to buy Bayonetta 2. I think it's like 70 bucks. Bayonetta is totally a dom. You thought you had BPD. Did you figure that out? Hmm? What? I don't know. Just the, her whole sorry, personality? Sorry. Um, what was I going to say? Uh, you thought you had BPD, but you're probably just suffering with undiagnosed autism and your mood rapidly changes due to being overstimulated. That is very possible. What domain names did you pick up? I'm entertaining 
whatever humor you are trying to throw at me. Mm. Should have got Coke. Oh, we got Pepsi. No, okay. She doesn't want Pepsi. Damn it. I want Pepsi. I do have ice cream on the way. What's this? I'm not clicking on any of those, by the way. Can I have a Pepsi? Oh, ice cream. Okay. I'm still eating chippy. Mm. Yeah, dude, it's actually quite nice to dip in chips and some McDonald's. Good domains. Yeah. Hmm. It's actually quite nice to dip chips, McDonald's chips, into McFlurries. I'm not dipping chips in ice cream. Not when they're so deep, because you can't really dip them. You can store Pepsi in condoms. Good advice. Good advice. There's probably more, you know, mobile. Um, not, not mobile. Not would taste weird. Mm. Radio Ultras, have a good one. Thank you so kindly for swinging by tonight. I'm going to keep making a mess of my desk eating chips. Oh. It's 6.31 a.m. and you could have ice cream right now. You could. Do not let society shame you for having ice cream at 6.30 in the morning. We do. This is, this is a social construct. If you feel ashamed of eating certain foods at certain times of the day, that is society... Embedding that nonsense into your head. You don't need to have cornflakes at 8 a.m. You can have cornflakes at fucking 11 o'clock at night. You can make yourself a cheese toasty at 4 a.m. in the morning. That's fine. It is perfectly fine. It is morally correct. You should be. If you do, it, if you don't do it, I will, we will shame you. We will shame you if you put specific time frames on certain foods. No, we will shame you if you don't make a cheese toastie. We will shame you <laughs> if you don't make a cheese toastie at 4 a.m. You're not sure if trans. Cereal is always better at night, it is. Are those French fingers? Are you calling me French? The ND trans demo to cook an entire fucking meal at 3 a.m. and not eat for two days. <laughs> if I don't have cornflakes at 8 a.m., I start to get to a, the urge to masturbate again. <laughs> I've eaten way too much today. You haven't. I have. You I've really eaten so haven't. much. Oh, God. I want to go back to the gym, babe. Okay, do it. Um. Well, if I test negative tomorrow, I can. Can you? Yeah, I don't have the kids. Is it, what if you get a false negative? I'm gonna make it a false negative, fuck. I am asymptomatic at this point. I'll just wear a mask, honestly. <coughs> Transmuting myself into cheese toast. Alchemy is good. Are you okay, babe? <coughs> She's still coughing. <coughs> she still have a cough. Can we get some love in chat for my GF and some painkillers? Do you want some paracetamol? What are knickknacks? I feel like I've heard of those, but oh, you know what sucks, and I fully expect it to come around again. Tubes, tubes are so fucking good. They're like burger rings, but better, right? Uh, burger rings are just the top. The top. Yes. What do you mean? Burger rings. You can't go higher than burger rings. No, no, no. Tubes are better than burger rings. Oh, okay, I've never had tubes. Tubes are amazing, but they keep getting discontinued, and then they keep coming back, only to get discontinued again because nobody's buying enough tubes. I've never had tubes. Are they still in? Are they still selling them? There should be a website called Are Tubes Available? News.com.au cringe. Um. Tubes. So midway through last year. Um. Smith's owns tubes and they just they just keep bringing them back as this limited time thing if we find tubes and buying some and you're eating them you will or maybe I shouldn't because I it will crush you when they come off the shelves again they are honestly just the best thing tubes T W O B S tasty tubes and the problem is for some fucking reason they're not even meant to be a limited edition thing, right? They were just a regular product, but they weren't making enough money selling them that they just kept discontinuing them. And then due to popular demand, they'd bring them back again. And then they wouldn't sell enough, so they'd take them out of stock. <laughs> it's happened like three or four times at this point. It must, it has to be a, an, uh, like a marketing campaign. Oh, come on. It has to be on purpose. 
Hurry up. They're good. I'm trying to hurry up. She wants to eat ice cream, and I'm not done with my chippies yet. This is good stream content. Just me eating on stream. Use me, tube oo woo. Honestly, tubes are top energy. You know, whatever the fuck that means. Is it possible to be a submissive top? Thank you for continuing Yarrow. your membership. Yes. Wow, Abby, you look hot. Thank you, Yarrow. Mm -hmm. For the does. for the sub, I want to say for the one hundred bits, and I'm like, what? No. Thank you for the for the twelve months. Can you put them on like rings though? No, you can't. Let Maddie have ice cream. Go get the ice creams. I'll hurry up and finish this. We're gonna do ice cream. We got Oreo McFlurries. Let them have ice cream. My cat has now stolen the chair. <laughs> get the hashtag trending on Twitter. Let Maddie have ice cream and just, you know, everyone post a tweet with just hashtag let Maddie have ice cream with no context. Just like, hashtag let Maddie have ice cream, she deserves it. Or make yeah. some sort of tweet related to it. Aww. Just post that on Twitter. Fuck you. No context at all. Macca's chips are worse than McDonald's fries. What the fuck's the difference? Pivot from trans news talk show format to McDonald's mukbang. I mean, it worked for fucking Nikocado Avocado. Going to mukbang content. I mean, I don't... I, I could not. There's no way I could. <clears throat> Chair Wars yeah. continues. Yeah, I'm actually amazed we've bounced back since our internet completely cut out midway through the stream. Fuck you, internet. Fuck you. How dare you. It's a lith sexual. I don't... I still don't feel like that's quite right. I don't know if it's... Basically, you just find having sex with strangers hot. Yes, basically, yeah. Well, very people you just met. Here we go. Here's a tweet for you to retweet. I'm gonna post this. You're gonna you're gonna retweet it, and you're gonna like quote tweet it with "Let Maddie have her Let Maddie have ice cream." Do it. Go on. I want to get. Ice cream now. I want to get as many uh, tweets as Vorsch commonly gets trending on Twitter every fucking day. Oh. Agenda swapped Zorro is headed to the CW. The crap work. Zara. <laughs> Zara. Zara. Hmm? It would be called Zara. Yeah, probably. Anyway. Why are we. I, I mentioned no, this before. I am not going to have people in my chat dragging other content creators. I am not going to get involved in drama shit. I refuse. Like, yeah. I think it's actually TOS. If I let you guys drag another content creator, it's actually TOS on me. Mhm. Mm I loathe and despise the idea. You can drag me. That's fine. You can trash me. Um. I can trash you. You can trash me. <laughs> Hot take, my girlfriend. <laughs> oh, we like the lipstick, by the way. It's by Lime Crime. I've got Lime Crime lipstick on. I'm gonna see how many times I can say Lime Crime in a uh, in a short clippable segment. Lime Crime Black Velvet. It's a it's a mattifying lipstick. It's fantastic. I need to get mattifying foundation because um, my foundation is very shiny. They are. Yeah. Fuck Abigail, she's a hot goth titty streamer and nothing else. I mean, yes. I mean, look at all that titty. Holy shit. I would grab it if I could. <laughs> I would grab it if you could. Is Lime Crime Black Velvet McDonald's ice cream proof? Let's put it to the test. Sponsored. Legit, I need some sponsorship so I can actually make a reasonable living off this shit. Gawk. Gawk. That's the noise I make when I'm gobbling on gawk. Stolen. Mm -hmm. Stolen tweet. I stole that from Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> you. 
if you follow Jackie on Twitter, you will have seen that tweet already, probably. Jackie, AK. Goth girl in by lighting, typical. What if I go... Angie. Goth girl in red lighting, though. There you go, what do you think? My most iconic tweet of all time is probably stolen, honestly. I don't have an original thought in my dumb little head. But to be fair, when you think about it, that's most of our thoughts anyway. We regurgitate things that we're told. One is not born, but rather becomes a woman with a swinging 12-inch hog and big mommy milkers. <laughs> Milers. <laughs> Milers. Okay, Jody, NB, Flivvy, Jopy, Jody, Jody. There we go. Originality isn't real, it's a social construct. I don't think I deleted it. I don't typically delete tweets unless I make a spelling mistake. I stand by my tweets. I make dog shit tweets all the time and I stand by them. Unfortunately. Mm-hmm. Unreality isn't real. Surreal surreality. What was that? That word. Surreality. Yeah, that was good. Like, a recent banger of mine was, I support trans people, but, so you don't support trans people then. Got it. All you gotta do to get followers on Twitter is support trans rights, apparently. Surrealism. Ice support, King. Hmm? I support trans people, but I'm a trans person and I support myself, so... <laughs> To be fair, as a trans person, you literally can't support yourself because nobody will fucking hire us. Mm -hmm. Support trans people's butts. Have I hopped on, hopped on the Wordle fad? My girlfriend has. I've done a couple of them. I've tried to get it on it, but... She's itting me. We're very good. <laughs> Why is that a big deal? I don't know, because nobody calls me it. Everyone calls me she. It's <laughs> get some more it. Can we get some it's in chat? Um, on the subject of Wordle, this is an interesting thing. Um, this is an article by the New York Times, and hopefully it doesn't ask me to subscribe or anything. I'm waiting for it to load or try to do something. Okay, good. You're not going to try to dox me? Okay, you're not going to bring up that stupid thing. Sign in with Google with your full name and dead name. Don't Please don't do that, websites. Can I block that somehow? I fucking hate it. It, like a nerd, yes. It, it. Uh, well, she, it. Either or, honestly. It is more apropos to certain social situations. Anyway, Wordle is a love story. The word game has gone from dozens of players to hundreds of thousands in a few months. It was created by a software, software engineer in Brooklyn for his partner. Josh Wardle, a software engineer in Brooklyn, knew his partner loved word games, so he created a guessing game for just the two of them. As a play on his last name, he named it Wordle. Hello, Ali. How you doing? But after the couple played for months and after it rapidly became an obsession in his family's WhatsApp group once he introduced it to relatives, Mr. Wardle thought he might be onto something and released it to the rest of the world in October. On November 1st, 90 people played. On Sunday, just over two months later, more than 300,000 people played. It's been a meteoric rise for the once-a-day game, which invites players to guess a five-letter word in a similar manner as the Guess the Color game Mastermind. Oh my god, that didn't even click for me. What? I love Mastermind. It didn't click? No, it did, I literally didn't think of that. Um, I Mastermind on Twitch. I have yeah. Oh yeah, we should. After guessing a five-letter word, the game tells you whether any of your letters are in the secret word and whether they are in the correct place. You have six tries to get it right. Once a day game is more sex than I've had in years. <laughs> My goal is to try to have sex multiple times a day for the next few years. Um, few such popular corners of the internet are as low frills as the website which Mr. Wardle built himself as a side project. There are no ads or flashing banners, thank fuck for that. No windows pop up or uh, ask for money. No, oh, no windows pop up or ask for money. That was really weird to read for some reason. This is merely the game on a black background. More ice cream please. But the letters got smaller. Yeah, for some reason the letters got smaller. We don't know why. Um, I don't like it. 
I think people kind of appreciate that there's this thing online that's just fun, Mr. Wardle said in an interview on when on Monday, not Wednesday. Um, it's not trying to do anything shady with your data or your eyeballs, it's just a game that's fun. This oh shit. Was that him? <laughs> This is not Mr. Wardle's first brush with suddenly capturing widespread attention. Formerly a software Reddit engineer for Reddit, yeah. what? Yeah, Reddit. Like Reddit. Uh, he created two collaborative social experiments on the site called The Button and Place, which were phenomena in their moment. But Wordle was built without a team of engineers. It was just him and his partner, Palak Shah, uh, killing time during a pandemic. You know the button? I do know the button. I can't remember m much yeah, of it. Two second, two second countdown. Mm -hmm. Any, any person push the button. Oh, any okay. Reddit user, when they hit zero, something happens, but people hit the button. But it only uses because it hit once. Okay, yeah. Mr. Wardle said he created a similar prototype in 2013, but his friends, his friends, I'm sorry, were unimpressed and he scrapped the idea. In 2020, he and Ms. Shah got really into the New York Times spelling bee and the Daily Crossword, so I wanted to come up with a game that she would enjoy, he said. It's adorable. It is adorable. This is so sweet. The breakthrough, he said, was limiting players to one game per day. That enforced a sense of scarcity, which he said was partially inspired by the spelling bee, which leaves people wanting more, he said. Uh, which is sort of the same kind of um, gameplay model as Animal Crossing, isn't it? Yeah. Like, you can only do so much in a day. Um... <clears throat> I haven't played Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, yeah, I should at some point. Uh, word games have proved immensely popular for the Times and other companies in recent years, and many, such as the Spelling Bee, have devoted, uh, developed devoted fan followings. But since Wordle was originally built for uh, just Mr. Wardle and Ms. And Ms. Shah, the initial design ignored a lot of the growth hacking features that are virtually expected of games in the current era. While other games send notifications to your phone hoping you'll come back throughout the day, Wordle doesn't want an intense relationship. It's something that encourages you to spend three minutes a day, he said, and that's it. Like, it doesn't want any more of your time than that. Wordle lacked the ability to share results until mid-December. Mr. Wardle noticed players sharing the results by typing out a grid of green, yellow, and black emojis, so he built an automated way for players to brag about their success in a spoiler-free way. Um, you want to play Animal Crossing on the TV, but I'm on the TV! Oh my goodness, I'm in the way of Animal Crossing. How dare I. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay right here. Thank you very much. You can't kick me off your television. This is my place now. I'm the cute little trans femme in your television. I thought one person could set up mastermind. I wanted to do it. Oh really? What's the problem with that? Sorry. You okay? So rude, I am rude. Just play it mobile, you could. You could just just like take the, the switch off the dock. Weren't they gonna do like a, 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 a van, uh, what's it called? A, an amped up switch that was... Um, no, 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 like a switch that you couldn't um, undock. Which is a stupid idea. Honestly. It's just a regular it's console. A switch. Then. It's a switch. Yeah, right? Because they did the Switch Lite, which is purely portable. Anyway. If he were optimizing the game to gain as many players as possible, he would have included a link at the end of the tweet that the tool generates, he said. But after looking into it, he said it would have looked trashy and not as visually compelling, and he liked the grid's mysterious air, which he felt piqued people's interests. Hello, Diz. How you going? While Ms. Shaw was the lucky recipient of the first game, she has played a key role in getting it ready for the public, Mr. Wardle said. An initial list of all the five-letter words in the English language, about 12,000, contained a lot of obscure words that would have been near impossible to guess. So he created another game for Ms. Shah. This time, she would sort through those 12,000 or so words, designating whether or not she knew them. That narrowed down the list of Wordle words to about 2,500, which should last for a few years. Already a few words have riled up the fans. Some are upset by Rebus and Tapir. I got saying both of those. <laughs> she got both of those. <laughs> saying they were not familiar enough. Ms. Shah says she wakes up every day with a new routine. She warms up with the spelling bee, which gets her mind right for Wordle. She also loves New York Times crossword and cryptic crosswords. Hmm? Yeah, you should. Uh, though Wordle is now shared with the world, she said she appreciated that Mr. Wardle originally created it for her. It's really sweet, she said. This is definitely how Josh shows his love. <laughs> Aww. Isn't that sweet? There we go. Today's word was... What was today's word? Found him? Oh, can we, we can't really... 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were on screen, by the way. <laughs> that is such a cute story. There we go. That's what we need more of. We need more wholesome news. In particular, we need more wholesome trans news. Mm. I'm still picking up my McFlurry. Hey. Hey, in hey, it's Lockie. How you going? You can give me wholesome cat news, yes. Of course. This is not a wholesome cat. No, he's an he's a he's an asshole cat. He's a, he's a. Hang on, ready? Come on, you brat! <laughs> <laughs> he's a fucking <laughs> asshole. You got you can't take your eyes off it because if he jumps on you, looking away, you can get out. <laughs> 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 It's not free sexual, we've already looked at that. I'm not free sexual, that's not it. <laughs> he, he, he very lightly nicked me. <clears throat> he doesn't he wants my hand specifically. Oh hang on. <laughs> no he, he wants mine! Oh my god! Do you hate me that much? No really? Just looking good. Come on. Do a jump. Oh, here we go. He's getting ready. He's calculating. <laughs> he's calculating. Yeah, he's calculating. Come on. Oh, <laughs> fuck. That's dangerous. <laughs> he wants to assert dominance. He is the most <laughs> bottom cat I've ever seen. Uh, it's 11.53. We're nearly done with stream. Don't leave, though, because that'd be rude and mean. Um... <clears throat> You know, um, oh look, it's one of these people. Wow, how sad for you, bestie. Um, let's look at some positive trans news on this on the thing. We already talked about. Can you um, the pardon? Can we get hugs? Can, you do the banning? can someone ban can that cunt? You guys can, can do. Click the ban button. Okay, I can click the ban button. Loser. Can I hugs? I saw the hey. I'm like, no, that's that's so tough. Cringe. No, Imagine can't. being that cringe. Can we just get some cringe in chat? Okay, fine. I'll hug you. Hang on. Here we go. Can we get some Lockie is cringe in chat? Okay, fine. I'll do that. I gotta be very careful. These hugs. Ow. Oh what? my god. What did you do? I... Ow. Shut the chat. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that's... Dumb bitch. One thing they... I mean, they do tell you this. I should, I should have seen this coming. Titty saw. Titty saw. Um, is that when you bump your nipples, they, they're very tender. Hint. Huh? Hint. Hint. The pain means it's working. Oh, I know it's working. Can I tell you something? I probably shouldn't, actually. Pain. Not about pain, but about how I know it's working. Look, I'll just say this. I have... I, I showed someone them. <laughs> Not her. And they mentioned to me, it's like, when do mine start to look like that? <laughs> so I know it's working. I know I know the HRT is working. But yeah, that, that, that actually hurt a bit. Mm. It is very working. Mm. What? Mm. Hugs and, and holding hands and stuff. Holding hands and hate stuff. I hate asterisk. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> H asterisk, elding. H asterisk and mm. Um, mm. growing new tissue hurts a bit too, right? Yeah, it does. <clears throat> Anyways, what time? It's eleven fifty-five. Oh, look, we got another wanker. Oh, how many accounts did you make, bestie? What you doing? What you doing? Oof. 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 You know what's hilarious about these losers, right? Is that I know I pass. <laughs> I actually know. I'm, I'm well aware of the fact that I'm a conventionally attractive woman. And they're, they're coming in here saying it's too late for you. And they're trying to trash me on my appearance and call me all sorts of things. It's like, I know there are plenty of people out there who want to fuck me, dude. I'm sorry that that's not the same for you. Right? 
You should just ban them. <laughs> you should just ban them, honestly. Unless you're enjoying teasing them, go ahead, I don't mind. Hello, you're a bitey little cat. I have natural hair. Oh, I don't own wigs! <laughs> don't know how else to get through to these donut heads, you bash them. No, don't actually. Um, stop it! I'm gonna have to scruff you. Stop it. Chad Abbey versus the Virgin Trolls, look at them. Losers. Was wondering when the you're a man would happen, yeah. They're so stereotypical. What are you, like, 14? Trolls are wrong for a living. They don't live, though. They're desperate losers. Mm. You're super jelly of my hair. I wish my hair would behave itself, I am though. I so jelly. Have some heart. It's Thank you. It's long enough to actually do stuff with. They're such sad sacks of shit. They got nothing going on. I know. Hmm. Your hair's getting there, though. Your hair's getting quite long. It's very cute. <laughs> um, mine's mine's pretty reasonably long. Look at that. Um, hope you didn't miss much. Just some troglodytes. My cat's having a moment. <laughs> there you go. Yarrow posted the wordle in chat. There we go. Come on, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it. Come on. Come on. What you doing? <coughs> We're just tormenting my cat now. There we go, you got me. Oh, darling. I might have to go and play nurse. Can I take some... I got painkillers. There. There's water in my bottle. Doing drugs on stream. Doing drugs on stream. Did you? Um... No, you haven't had them for the last two days, dickhead. I did. I did. Oh no, hang on, yeah, it's Wednesday. Fuck. You got three minutes, two minutes. Alright. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls forget to take their meds <laughs> until the evening. Oh Thank my you god. For your enormous contribution to Yarrow. the Yarrow. Most excellent You can't friend. do that! <laughs> 25? Fuck me. Jesus Christ. Fuck me. Foggy woggies. Foggy woggies. Hang on. Can we get some Poggy Woggies in chat? Oh my god. Jesus, you gifted subs to Jaeger, Ember, Orgius, I don't know how to say that, Snarky, Lotus, Nicole, Distron, Katrina Kaiju, Two Side Same Coin, FAQ Enabler, Molly McAllister, Lazy Bon Bon Bon, McKizza95, Kai Goon, The Bahama Mama, Redolent Thought. Uncle Festa 666, Small Disaster, B Rat, Arden Slacker, DJ Mule, Toyota Mike, Classy, Classy Femme, Accounting Nightmare SA, Epo Light, Throw Me Ore, and Bread Underscore Theory. Holy shit. That's a way to end, the, to wrap the stream up. Jesus. If we were doing a, a subathon, I'd be going for another two and a half hours probably. I should do a subathon at some point. Thank you so much. Oh my god. How do I respond? Um. My cat is now making noises. Uh. Yeah, the llama's not in here, even in here. I, I don't think it necessarily gives... I mean, they might be in here. But if there are people getting subs and they're not in here, it's because they've probably watched the stream. I think there's like an yeah, order of you. priority. Like, it'll typically gift subs to people who are regulars, and people who are in the stream, and then, um, if you do, like, the random thing. And then, if it, if you literally run out of people to gift subs to for whatever reason that have seen the stream, it'll start giving them to random people, yeah. Look at all those subs that Abby can dom, professionally. Anyways, holy shit, thank you so much, Yarrow. Jesus. How did, what the fuck? <laughs> Holy crap. Enjoy your emotes, folks. Totally seen B-Rat before in some chats. There we go. There we go. Based. Hey. Well. We should probably you head on to kind. whoever next. And a sub to Draco. Thank you so much. Look, there's two of us. There's two of us. There's four of us. Daily subs, 27 out of one. What? Oh, sorry. I'll close that. I'll get rid of that. I wasn't meaning to open my stream. I was going I just opened it because I could. The rogue room shall be continued. We will not cease the rogue room. The rogue room will continue. 
on the next episode, which will be tomorrow, um, circumstances permitting. Who can we go to? Who's live? Share more. Uh, nobody is standing out to me. Not really. Pixel's live. What's Pixel doing? He did come in at the end code, man. <laughs> Just got, uh, yeah, Rad is live, but I raided Rad really recently. So I don't raid the same person over and over again. Hello, Rio. How are you going? Um, oh, is Pixel playing Genshin? Or, oh, you can aim at a cool VTuber, sorry. Um, maybe. We are going to go head over to somebody else's stream. Um, I don't know who, though. It's really weird, because, like, usually I'm pretty good with this. Like, Heem yeah, is live. Like Joy, 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 Joy Aileen playing... Where? Oh, Animal Crossing. We could do Animal Crossing. Am I in the running for partner? Not yet. My actual path to partner achievement is like just around 50 at the moment. Um, you need to get to 75 or over. And my average of 75 viewers at the moment is at 51.48. And I actually don't have the other two requirements yet. Um, as you can see here, I haven't streamed for 25 hours over the past 30 days. And I haven't streamed for 12 different days either. Um, because I haven't been streaming a lot over the past, over that time period. Um, but, where are my channel analytics? Like, this is what my last 30 days looks like. How can I get rid of my money thing? There we go. Uh, can I, like, hide that? No? Doesn't matter. Too bad. People, they don't get to see it. Whatever. Over the last 30 days, I've streamed, like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 days. Um... Technically, today counts in that. So yeah, I'm I'm falling behind on my path to partner requirements. Yeah. Well, time to grind. I mean, if you want to do the path to partner thing, like the partner push thing, I find that personally really obnoxious. I would rather have the capacity to break the path to partner achievement. Oh, That's melon nice. pantsu. There we go. Um, I'd rather like breeze through those without having to go. Oh, partner push, partner push. I've got that hair in my eye socket. Um, but you know, it'd feel, it'd feel like more of a comp, uh, an accomplishment if I did it without putting that kind of stuff in there. Broken. There you go. Hello. We're sort of at the end. Um, I'll get there eventually. I reckon I will. I reckon I'm pretty good at doing the streaming thing. Mm -hmm. I reckon I'll get partner eventually. You actually can stay around for a bit. Head pats. Mm. <laughs> Um, there was that one musician who was do really doing that partner push stuff and you'll admit it was a turn off from your channel. And I mean, the thing is it can work, right? The partner push can work if you have a dedicated community of followers who like, what the, what they do is they'll all just like tune in and have the stream on even if they're not watching it, right? And um, what will happen is once the person gets the partner tick, all those people will stop watching. <laughs> I've seen it happen a couple of times now. It's like, um... They'll they'll hit partner. It's like yeah, I got the I got partner, and then their views will drop down to like 40, 30, or whatever. I don't know how they do it. It's like if you can if you have the influence to convince seventy five plus people, and don't get me wrong here, you need way more than that to even be eligible for partner. Seventy five is the absolute bare minimum you have to pass over a thirty apply. day period. You still need to apply. You still need to get accepted. And generally speaking, my understanding is that they require you um, to have like upwards of a hundred or more view average viewers. And then Twitch needs to look at your stream and say, okay, this is an active, engaged community that we see as representative of the platform. And there's like so many factors that need to be considered because partner is actually a, a manual thing. So you put the application in and then Twitch analyzes your stream and determines whether you're eligible or not. Um, <clears throat> so the whole partner push thing is nonsense. You're not bothering to try for partner. That's a pipe dream for me. It's a pipe dream for a lot of streamers. Uh, seemingly, honestly. You playing with <laughs> You're playing a risky game there, babe. All right. There be boobs. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, that, that comes back around to the, the question I posed on Twitter the other day of like, at what point did my boobs become censorious? Why, at what stage did my nipples, 
have necessity to be censored on the internet and on mainstream television. Why do I suddenly have female presenting nipples? When did this happen? What if I just like tied my hair up and let what little stubble I have left grow out for a day or two and then took a topless photo and just posted it somewhere where you're not and just be like, these are my masculine nipples. You'd feel really terrible. I would feel so dysphoric if I took a photo of myself with stubble, fuck. Not that I get much, by the way. It'd probably take me at least a couple of weeks to have anything really significant. You know. It'd be a really hard couple of weeks. It'd be a really hard couple of weeks and I would be on the verge. Anyway, let's go to somebody else's stream. Um, let's go have a look through suggestions really quickly because I saw some in there. Ariala is playing Dream Daddy. Melon Pantsu is playing Genshin. Um, Papa Glitch is live. We know Rad and Pixel are live. Um... Laser hair removal has been fucking... <laughs> laser hair removal has been a fucking godsend, honestly. Um, unfortunately, I haven't had laser hair removal on my chest or my legs. I'm doing legs soon, because my leg hair is honestly more of an irritation than a dysphoria thing. What's up? Lucy? Lucy? Um, hallucination. Uh, I can just spell it. Spell it? Yeah. Um... Foma, W W F, Foma, 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 Oh, it's this fucking ad with this fucking guy again. I hate him. Um, <laughs> sorry, I just like, no. I don't like this guy. I have very, I'm very sus on this guy. I don't like him. I haven't seen this. Just, I don't trust him. Anyway, so anyway, um, wish you could have your boobs passed for masculine nipples, but they are very boob shaped. Yeah, I feel that. Um, six hours, so way longer than I have. I am familiar with Tell Me Why. I've played a fair bit of it. I need to finish it. Um, it's a good game. I It was for free during Pride Month last year. Um, so I've got it sitting there on Steam, I think. I should finish it. Drugs! Alright, we're gonna raid Hallucination. Um, who is playing some Hades. Who is playing some Hades. You're debating cancelling your laser right now, going through a company that turns out is insanely predatory with their contracts and deals. Oof. My, my place only ever does by appointment, so they don't sign you up for a contract or whatever. So, that's positive, I suppose. And the treatments themselves have been good. So, yeah. Um, but I totally understand where you're coming from. You don't want to get stuck into a business model that could be potentially harmful to you or other customers. So, you know. <clears throat> Downloaded it and played it and finished it in one sitting. Nicely done. Um... I think, yeah, Chapter 1 is free on Steam, but during Pride Month, the whole game was free. So as a result, I've got the whole thing of, um... Oh, we didn't cover Tabletop Sim! Damn it! Uh, Tabletop Sim is queerphobic, don't play it. Anyway, um, there's a whole thing. So the community yeah, is fucking bad. Right it's in the rules that you can't talk about being gay or trans in global chat or something. Which well, is dumb as fuck. Anyway, we'll talk about it tomorrow because we don't, we're running out of time because the raid's going to tick off in a minute. Yara, thank you for gifting a sub to Squid Gear T. Be kind to yourselves and each other. I love your faces. Try not to be a shit cunt. Stop throwing more slogans on this, Abby. I'll see you when I'm looking at you. Bye. Bye.